Okay, hello everyone. So my name is Junieski, and um, for today, <clears throat> uh, you know that the the U.S. Chess Championship, um, I mean, was held here in St. Louis, and um, amazing games were, were played. And today I want to show you one or two that I consider were the best games, and also for for you to know like the ideas. Um, openings maybe we can talk about openings even though the uh, probably the middle game and the end game is the most important in this game also those are attacking games and like the principle of the attack and um, like how Ray the first game is Ray Roxon against Wesley so how Ray um, he conducted this game in a, an amazing way and also the opening was quite interesting so yeah, so I will I will start. D4, uh, knight f6, c4, e6. So well, this is common, and I think Wesley usually. Um, so he plays d5 uh, against knight c3. He he plays d5 and bishop b4 sometimes. Um, this well, white is obviously fighting for for the center. And this is the the Nixo. So this opening is called uh, the Nixo, Nixo Indian, and it's very interesting. I actually like with with uh, with Black. I have played this opening many times. The main idea is to well, the bishop is pinning the knight, but the main idea is to trade the bishop for the knight, for the knight to destroy the white pawn structure a little bit and put pressure on the pawn on c4, like th this pawn usually. After this trade, like the bishop for the knight, then uh, here, then the pawn on c4 uh, becomes a weakness. This is usually one of the ideas in this type of position. Uh, well, yeah, the extra pawn on c3 is actually, um, I mean, it's actually good because it supports the center. So. But because you have the pawn on c3, you cannot defend the pawn on c4, and that's why uh, black will attack that weakness. And that's why that's usually one of the ideas of the uh, Nixon. Now, um, so Ray played this e3, and I'm sure some of you will know this opening um, with e3. Mm, solid players like this queen c2, which is Capablanca's opening. Capablanca was too positional and he didn't want to give this chance, the chance of destroy his pawn structure. And so he thought about a move like queen c2 and if bishop takes, queen takes. And then you take with the queen. So uh, e3 is the Rubinstein opening. And well, it's supporting the center. Um, yeah, black can take immediately here. But actually, bishop takes c3 is not the main line here. The main line is what happened in the game. Uh, yeah, you just play, um, you said you play G, bishop g5. Yeah, bishop g5 is another idea, bishop g5. Um, I remember I have faced this move. And um, d6 here, well, you can play, you have to be careful when the bishop is on g5 to play d6 because I'm queen a4, knight c6, and then some d5, um, that you will lose a piece. But against bishop g, uh, g5, h6 is fine, also b6 is fine, and then playing bishop b7, which is another idea in this type of openings, to play bishop b7 and get the control of e4. Um, e3, castles, knight f3, Bishop takes c3 here, well, still possible. And, but right now, the main move is d5. So this is the main line uh, when white plays bishop d3 and then c5. This is um, actually the main line in this type of position. So if castled, there are a couple lines here for black. Black plays knight c6. Well, usually the idea is to also get control of the center or a more concrete variation which is this one and then b6 this is a more concrete variation and black will 
play against the isolated pawn, which is usually the idea to block that pawn and uh, maybe go to an endgame and uh, take advantage of this weak pawn. But yeah, this game was not boring. So bishop takes, pawn takes, and now after this trade, okay, uh, black has the pair of knights, and you want to keep the position as close as possible. That's why the idea is more uh, after you trade the bishop for the knight. So usually in this type of position, the idea is more to play d6, e5, to get a close center. Uh, d6, okay, Wesley played d6, and then uh, bishop d3. Well, um, Ray is placing the bishop in the most active square, but now uh, the problem with this move, or it looks like uh, there is a problem here, which is e5. It looks, it looks black is sacrificing a pawn here with this e5, uh, but if pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, um, anyway, this pawn structure is not uh, great for white, and eventually, probably this uh, pawn will fall. Also, um, black will win some tempos with that move. That's why against e5, um, instead of taking material, right play this move e4, which is a, uh, I mean, this was not novelty. Uh, there is a game played by Vasily Ivanchu with white and against Dean Liren that Ivanchu won, and they played the exact same position. So, e4, uh, rook e8. Okay, let's, uh, let's try to, fi to find and figure out what to do against this threat. Now, black is threatening pawn takes and knight takes e4. So, what to do? And also, white is trying to get advantage, which is something important in this type of uh, position and in, in general in chess. Okay, so pump, pumpkin the cat says d5. Uh, okay, I have d5, I have queen c2, uh, bishop g5, three moves, and still I don't have the best move in the position. So d5, let's talk about move by move. So d5, um, it looks interesting, but you are closing the position completely and you have the bishop pair. Now with d5, you are also giving this c5 square for your opponent's knight. Now after d5, this plan is really strong. And also the pawn on c4 will become mm, probably weaker after d5. Because after b6, knight bd7, bishop a6, rook c8, a plan like c6, pawn takes, uh, will put a lot of pressure on these pawns. Uh, queen c2, that, I mean, looks more interesting. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and then the problem will be knight takes e4. Because if you take bishop takes, then bishop f5. Knight d2, I can trade, and then f5. And this pawn is uh, hanging. L let me just um, make the move to make it more like easier to understand. Bishop f5, attacking, or also f5 is um, also fine. But bishop f5, if knight uh, d2, then you take, and same thing, I will play f5. And black will win a pawn in this position. Bishop g5, on the other hand, um, yeah, I mean, looks mm, interesting. After h6, I don't think you want to take, you will probably want to play bishop h4. But knight bd7, knight f8, knight g6, winning tempos and closing the position more. And yeah, so someone here, uh, Lionel, found the move, castles. Now, white sacrifice, sacrifices a pawn on e4, and this is like a gambit idea. When you sacrifice a pawn, the idea is to win tempos, and you will use those tempos, so you will develop your pieces quickly, and you will use those tempos to convert them in a, an attack. So you will attack your opponent's king, your opponent's pieces, and that's actually what Ray did in this position. So, uh, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes e4, and the same position was played in Ivanchu's game. 
here, if we play queen c2, this could be a transposition to the, the same line with queen c2. Let's say here, uh, queen c2, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes e4, and then castles. This will be a transposition. But after um, castles, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, then white doesn't have to play queen c2. So white, white can play rook e1 instead. Knight of, uh, knight of six, and when we are attacking and when we are material down, it's, it's true that it's not good to trade off uh, like pieces, especially too many pieces, but in this case, um, it's good to trade off the rook so that we can bring the other rook to the open file. Also, this rook could be a good um, defensive piece in the king side, and so right trade rooks in this position. So rook takes e8. Queen takes e8. <clears throat> Ivanchu's game, I think, yeah, knight takes um, e8 happened in Ivanchu's game. And after queen c2, I think queen c2, uh, or no, no, bishop, bishop g5 was the move. So bishop g5, then f6, bishop d2, uh, knight d7, queen c2. Uh, white got the comfortable advantage here. Uh, basically, this position is slightly better for white even though white is down a pawn. Now let's go back. Queen takes e8 and okay I invite you to try to find raid move. What should white play here? So when we are down a pawn we should attack as quickly as possible but sometimes we have to take some measures. Mm, d5, you said d5, uh, okay, your d is bishop b2, and then develop the rook, okay, so Isuru, what's your idea with that move? Because that might be, might be the idea. <clears throat> yeah, so it sort of found the move. So h3. Now, what's the idea of this h3? Who can tell me the idea of this move? And this simple move is, um, I mean, it's powerful in this position. So yes, you stop bishop g4, because when you are attacking, you want uh, to attack with all your pieces. And it's the same thing with the, when you are defending. So you mentioned uh, d5, I think uh, Pumpkin mentioned d5. Well, if d5, then you are not stopping bishop g4. I will play bishop g4, bishop b2, and then knight bd7. And my pieces, look, black pieces are better coordinated. And bishop h5, bishop g6 to trade off this bishop looks like, uh, like a very interesting plan after h3, bishop h5. So um, that's why you play a move like h3, prophylaxis. Then I bd7. And we can, we, we, we see how now after this h3, what kind of problem a black has? Well, this lies for bishop, who, um, of course, Wesley wants to develop this bishop, but now it's not, uh, I mean, it's not a, um, I mean, there is not a good, good square. You could develop e6, but then after knight bd7, d5 is a problem. You could develop the bishop, well, if d7, knight c6, then bishop g5 and could be some problems here. So it's not so easy to, to find a good weight for the bishop. And what Wesley did was logical, play knight bd7. And then um, he wants to develop the bishop in this diagonal. And yeah, b6, bishop b7, yes, uh, pumpkin, that's, um, that's a plan. And that was actually what happened in the game. Now, <clears throat> in the, um, so 
Queen C2 was played and then B6, right? So Queen C2, uh, the back rank is controlled. The Queen in C2 put pressure on this uh, diagonal. And now we have this dot square bishop. And okay, the rule says we should place our pieces that's in the middle game and usually in endgames too. We should place our pieces in the most active squares. Now we have to find the most active square for this bishop. And Ray found the most active square. Now who could, who could think about the, the most active square here? Um, I mean, if I have to consider, let's see, three moves, I could pick bishop g5, looks active, maybe b2, and my third move will be probably d2, so that you c I can go and bring my rook to e1. So which one could be uh, stronger for white? G5. G5 looks interesting. Um, now bishop g5, if we bring the bishop to g5 and then black continues with bishop b7, then we have this little problem like the knight because black is taking our knight and will destroy our opponent's structure. Which means that, okay, we probably will have to play d5. And black cannot move this knight still, but then we will have to think, okay, which diagonal is better? This one, which is active too, or b2? And this one is more powerful because the bishop controls more squares, and at the same time, you put pressure on f6 same as with the bishop on g5. But to play bishop b2, um, obviously we have to find d5. So bishop C g5 is the second be best option. See, bishop here, attacking here, then d5. We have to play this move. Otherwise, bishop takes knight. And Ray played this bishop b2. Bishop b7 here, and well, um, we can't allow black to take our knight, so we have to play d5. And black played queen f8. So Westlake played queen f8. Why queen f8? Um, he assumed that white will fight for the file, for the open file. And yes, that's what usually we should do. When there is an open file, we should fight for the open file. But in this case, this is not a good option. Why, why is not a good, a good option? Well, if we place the rook on e1 after rook e8, then we will, we will be trading pieces. And we don't, want, we don't want to trade off pieces. Now, we have every piece developed, and that happens a lot in the gambit. Every time you sacrifice a pawn, you develop your pieces, and now you, ha you have to find something concrete. And that something concrete is attack. So you have to find a way to attack sometimes pieces, sometimes your opponent's king. If it's your opponent's king, it's even better. So how can white continue in this position? Because when we are attacking and when we are, let's say, we have our pieces active, we have to keep continuing with that attack. And, and that what is what it called uh, is called initiative, so we have to continue with that initiative. So how should white continue in this position? Knight g5, okay, that's a good move to talk about. Knight g5, when knight g5 is a good move. Okay, knight g5 is a good move if after a6, then you get something in exchange. Maybe after bringing the knight back, then this was uh, a weak pawn here, but it's, that's not the case. Or maybe you can sacrifice the knight or play on knight a7. But if you are not getting anything of that, then knight g5 in any position is not a good move. So g4, Pumpkin, and also Joshua 
found this move g4 and this is the best move we have to be very careful of open up or king side but in this case white has everything under control now look how mo like most white pieces are attacking these bishops they both look powerful the bishop on b2 uh, the bishop on d3 too um, now what the, what's the threat here Yes, this knight on f6. And you want to play this move g5. Now, there are two possible moves here to play against this g5 threat, uh, to face this threat. One is h6 and the other is g6. So which one do you think could be the best one? Uh, I'll say g6 probably. So why g6? Okay, and this is, this is a good move to, to learn about because we don't have that square bishop and our opponent has a that square bishop. So if we play g6 here, we are weakening our that square bishop. That means that this bishop, even though we are giving some room for the queen, yeah. this bishop becomes extremely powerful. Okay. And as a general rule, we have... Okay, this is just in general. We have these two pawns. We need to move one of them. If we have that square bishop, let's say a bishop on e7, we will move this one. That's usually what would happen. And if we have uh, a light square bishop, like, like is the case, we will move this. Because then we can try to control the light square weaknesses. But with g6, there is not opposition for this bishop. And um, after... I don't know, maybe queen c3 and g5 is uh, an like immediate threat. So, yeah, even, even king h2 could be good too. So that's why h6 uh, must be played in these cases. Now, h6 well, stops g5. When we are attacking, we want as many pieces as possible. Uh, yeah, so you said, that, oh, the h5 for the knight, when you play h6. Yeah, but the weaknesses, oh, yeah. so you're you are giving the h5 for the knight, so this is for dark tiger. Yeah, you're giving the h5 square if g5, in case of g5, but like the weaknesses are too uh, difficult to, to lead with. And um, after queen c3, it's difficult to stop g5. Yeah, queen, queen c3 looks too strong. Maybe que after queen c3, the only move I can think of is queen g7, like pinning yourself. But after g5, at least you have knight h5. So that's probably, um, yeah, that's probably the best move. So here, now what to do? So uh, g5 is still an idea, and we can continue the attack. So, when we are attacking, we want to bring as many, as many pieces as possible. Now, which piece, and this is a principle of middle game. So, which piece, um, like, hasn't played yet? yet? Well, this rook. Yeah. So, you want to, uh, yeah, so you said the rook is kind of sleeping. Yeah, it is. So, now, but why, well, which square is the best one for the rook? Is e1? I mean, is it this one? No, because it's the same thing, rook e8. Yeah. So, we need to find a better square for that rook. So, where should we put the rook? F1, maybe? F1, we will place the rook in a, uh, in a, in a place when we can open a file and then because the rooks are extremely powerful when we can open a file and then attack with the rook so we have our pieces attacking and also our rook right. so <clears throat> we can't um, open the f file but we can open the g file so that's why king h2 to oh, bring the rook the, the to g1 yeah it will take two moves, two moves yeah. it will take two moves but once that we place the rook here then well black can't stop that attack so it's too much or will be too much 
Uh, now. That's a good question. You are telling that to, to your opponent. That's true. But he's so, so strong that he can't do anything. So he just has to try to lead with this rook g1 and all of these uh, ideas. But yes, you are basically telling that to your opponent. Okay, I will play rook g1. I will play g5. Open up that file and then um, continue my attack. So just imagine if we move the rook here and then g5 pawn takes, knight takes, we have how many pieces attacking? So the knight, the rook, two bishops and a queen, five pieces. So that's too much. Now in this position, because yes, white had to um, had to lose a tempo to play g5 and bring the rook to u1. Now um, Wesley missed a good opportunity to kind of complicate things and maybe uh, equalize the game or or be at least uh, in the game still. But he made the mistake. But the move is obviously not obvious. So the move was, I, it is difficult to find. Um, okay, I will invite you to think for maybe one, two minutes and try to find the best move for, for black. When we are, when we are attacking or our opponent is attacking us, um, the first thing we need to think about is to, to counterplay. And if our opponent is attacking us in the king side, which is the case here, Ray is attacking in the king side, we should, we should counterplay in the center or queen side. Because we probably will have better pieces there. Um, okay, Pumpkin says knight c5. Knight c5 is um, an interesting idea, but you are breaking your opponent's structure. Um, also, bishop f5 might work too. I have moved like here in the chat, like c6 and b5. Um, and some of you said that you are not sure about that move. So yes, one of them is the move. And they are actually both doing the same or, or similar things. So they are trying to, you're, you're trying to contemplate in the queen side or center with both. Because b5, the idea is to take and then take the central pawn on d5. c6, the idea is to take the central pawn on d5 and uh, <clears throat> open up the bishop. So which one? Which one do you think? So which one do you think is the, the best move here? C6 or b5? Yeah, b5 is the best move, and it's not obvious. And the reason of why b5 is the best move is that, uh, so Wesley played c6, but when you play b5, you are winning a tempo. Yeah. Now, if pawn takes, yeah, if pawn takes, bishop takes d5. If um, b5, g5, now, against c6, g5, black is forced to take. In this position, you are not forced to take. You can take here. And you are winning a tempo. And still, white has some attack with bishop f5. Look how white, instead of like taking pawns, is just go for the attack. Instead of like taking material, you focus on the attack. Because your big advantage is here, the attack. Um, and after bishop f5, a pawn takes, knight takes, white has attack. And, but the position is complicated. Yeah, you take on d5, I will bring my rook to e1, huge attack, but um, this is the best thing, that, uh, that the best move for black, the best chance black had. Here, well, c6 happened, and after g5, now black is forced to take. What was his thinking behind c6? Oh, to take on d5 and open up the, the bishop. So he wants to take on d5, open up the bishop. Um, after g5, pawn takes, uh, knight takes. Well, after uh, pawn takes, here is, this is not obvious what to continue with, with white. If rook g1, okay, I can take here now. Um, is, is this move different from the previous position? No. It's difficult to tell in, in uh, a position like, like this one. 
It's too complicated. But then uh, Ray found a nice uh, continuation here to continue the attack. After King H2 and G5, um, one very interesting thing to, to point uh, to point out here in this game is that every move white played was an attacking move. So it was focused on the attack the whole time, creating threats, and it's usually what we should do. We should focus on the attack. Okay, you said uh, C takes D5 threatening Queen C7, but C takes D5, you are not concentrating in the attack. And also queen c7, for now, for now, um, like isn't doing anything. So yeah. if pawn takes, I take bishop d5, queen c7, mm, like doesn't do uh, anything. And also I could play rook c8, winning a tempo. And remember, we have to try to, um, to avoid uh, losing tempos. Okay, yeah, someone here found the move. Um, attack d6? No, actually you're not attacking d6 because the queen protects d6. Yeah, it's, uh, the queen is hidden, but still protects d6. Yeah, someone here in the chat found the move. The move is bishop check. After king h8, then bishop f5. See how, like, the, what's, what's the idea? Well, the idea is threatening bishop takes. And even if black protects, if Wesley protects the, the knight, I take here. Rook takes, and then I take the other defender. And then the queen is coming to h7. Yeah. So against bishop f5, knight e5 is mostly forced. Then how can white continue the attack? Which bishop? Um, bishop on f5. Ah, uh, but where? Still, h7 is covered by this knight. So even if you yeah, move sure. the bishop to d7 or even c8, yeah. so you still are not thre uh, threatening anything on. The, the knight. The problem is the knight. It's always there. Uh, what about this knight? So yeah, this knight is not threatening anything, but the bishop, uh, but the bishop, the bishop is blocking. So the knight is blocking this bishop, and this bishop, it's um, I mean, this bishop is extremely powerful. So you want to to put in in, um, in a yeah, yeah and uh, you want to bring as many pieces as possible, like rook g1. But in this case, yeah. So most of you have found here the move in the chat. So it's f4 first. You play f4, you are, you are kicking the knight out of e5. Now, the knight has to either like take on c4 or play knight g6. Well, the rule says if your opponent is attacking you, you should bring pieces, as, as many pieces as possible to the king side, even if you have to give material for that. But, um, so, if you take this pawn, now all black pieces, only the queen is here in the king side, are on the queen side. After bishop takes, pawn takes queen e2, yeah, it's practically game over. Queen here, the rook is coming, game over. So knight g6, that's the best defense. And here, um, so raid played, bishop takes f6, but uh, rook g1 was probably stronger because, well, you are bringing more pieces into the attack and this, is, this uh, threat is always there. Bishop takes f6, so you can play this move. Um, this move is not good, so, and that you can take it as a general rule. When we are attacking, instead of taking material, we should concentrate more in the attack. So bishop takes here, g6, let me talk about this move again. Pawn takes, queen takes, um, I mean, it looks fine. You are threatening knight f7, but it's actually not a good move. Why not? Oh, 
oh, Dar Tiger says that you play this type of position a lot. Well, you are lucky then, because uh, I mean, White is great here. King side attack with f4 and, and, and g4. Uh, yeah, usually in the Sicilian, when we play the English attack, we tend to uh, play f4, g4, h4, and try to push the pawn in the king side. So here, what well, queen g8, queen g8, knight f7, and you're gonna lose your queen. But queen e8 is a good move. Yeah, queen e8. Trading queens. If I can trade off queens, I'm fine. Probably more than fine. Yeah. And after knight of seven check, king g8. I have this threat. So even if knight h6 check, king f8. And well, black is fine here. So that's why. So rake took on f6. Pawn takes and how to continue the attack. Also, um, I know that I said that it's not good to trade off too many pieces when you're attacking, but in this case, you are trading an attacking piece for another piece who is defending. So it's not like you are trading this bishop for this bishop who is, isn't doing anything. You are trading your bishop for a knight who is defending the king side. So in these cases, you can do this, this type of things. Now, uh, pawn takes, and then how should y continue here? Because obviously, Ray had an idea. After pawn takes, you are attacking the knight, and that means that you have to continue your attack. You are not going to take this bishop and trade it for the knight to bring the knight back, this knight back. So you want to keep the attack going. Uh, that, that's true, that's true. That's a good point, uh, so Dark Tiger. So that's a good point. So uh, Dark, Dark Tiger is, is saying that it's weird that we play Rook King H2 to bring yeah, the Rook to, the yeah, to G1. And we haven't played Rook G1 yet. That's true. Here, actually, you could have, uh, so Ray could have played Rook G1 and was also a good move. Probably even better that Bishop takes uh, F6, but Bishop takes F6 also wins. And the thing is, we, like every move we have played before rook g1 is better or have been better than rook g1. Like for example here, yeah, white can play rook g1. But bishop h7 and bishop f5 is better. Uh, knight e5, you can play rook g1, but f4 is better than rook g1. Knight g6, and now is the, the time when you could have, or Ray could have played rook g1 here to continue the attack. But now, a bishop takes, pawn takes, this variation is also fine. Uh, okay, so... So knight f7? Knight f7, I take with the queen. You take with the queen, but then you clear that so you can move your rook to g1. But you can do something better. Okay. After knight takes, queen takes. You can take the knight, and that's, you get a pawn, so you get a pawn for, for that uh, trade, and also, um, besides of the pawn, it's a trade, so you are trading another piece who is defending the, the king side, and now the, the file is completely open. Uh, okay, so Dara Knight is still, still searching. Okay, we just saw the, uh, I mean, we, we um, were talking about the move. So it's, it's knight f7, sorry about that. Knight f7, queen te takes, and then bishop takes. Um, here, look that white trade, well, a lot of pieces, but now black like only has the queen protecting the king side, and the king side is too open, which means that weak, there are weaknesses everywhere. Uh, queen is seven, and you will say, okay, now finally rook g1. But maybe, even though this looks uh, logical, maybe there is a better move. 
So which move could be better than rook g1? So I'm already saying that, okay, yeah, rook g1 was not the move. Uh, that move, Misha, yes, is interesting. Mm, but not better than the move that, uh, yeah, Theodore, Agent, you are always, you are also saying the same move. But, um, so rook e1? for rook e1, so the queen is here. The queen goes back and then you're free to run. Where? Because then you have to be careful, you have to check me. Otherwise, I will have a lot of checks here. Oh, true. And someone, some of you said queen f5, but queen f5, queen e2. We have to, all the time, we have to be very careful of our opponent's best move, every time. And this is a very annoying th threat. If we move the bishop, like the, the queen, sorry, away of this defense, queen e2, and then it will be perpetual. Or after pawn takes, we might be in trouble with this powerful bishop. So, which other move? Yeah, okay, Misha found the move. Um, who else? Mac McCarthy also found it. Yeah. Some of you found this queen f2. Now the idea is to bring the queen to h4 and then finally bring the rook to g1. So only move for black, f5 is, I mean, this is practically the only move to prevent queen h4. Now what should white uh, play? Uh, okay, dark tiger, you were sent rookie one right now. Well, it looks stronger, rookie one. I mean, rook looks strong, but after queen f6, how can you use this, this file? You have two open files, g and e. Okay, so bishop takes f5, looks an interesting move too. But I mentioned before that when we are attacking, instead of taking material, we will focus on the attack and create threats. So bishop f5, yeah, that yeah. looks interesting, but you are losing a tempo. Yeah. So how can you we use that tempo better than taking one pawn? Well, finally, rook g1. <laughs> finally, after like more than, uh, Take away 10 moves, maybe even more, then this rook gif one comes. Um, basically here, uh, well, black has to also bring pieces into the defense of the king side. And now, a very important move here for white. There might be more, um, more than one way to win here. But this move is, um, d4. which one? Queen d4. Queen d4 check. Okay, but what, I, what if I go queen g7? We don't want to trade off uh, queen, right? So you probably will have to go back to e3 or f2, mm -hmm. and then queen f6. And I think the queen is, black's queen is better on f6 than e7. So here you want to put pressure in open files. And basically this is semi, semi open file. Uh, you have a pawn here, but you could take advantage of this too. And this is a completely open file. So uh, Theodore and Dark, Dark Tiger who is uh, Dark Tiger is in fire on fire today. <laughs> Here, yeah, found the move. Mm, and the idea is quite clear. Uh, 
Yeah, Black hasn't had the chance to play Pontex D, uh, C4 because um, he had to defend the king side, the whole king side. And now the thing is, you want to attack in this file, on this file. And Rook G5 is the idea. Now you have two threats. One is Queen H4, the other is Rook H5 and Rook H7. So it's keyword. Well, basically there is only one way to defend this position and uh, who can tell me the only way to defend the position for black? Because also when we are attacking, it's as extremely important at any level to find our opponent's best move. At any level, grandmaster level, um, even, I don't, know, I don't know, amateur level, we have to find our opponent's best move, uh, no matter what. Yeah, so that's the only move. Rook G7. I don't know, but if someone says King G7, okay, King G7 looks a really, really risky move. Yeah. King G7. Uh, I th actually, after King G7, there is a, I just saw a nice tactic, this Bishop H7 check. And if King takes, you give a beautiful checkmate. Um, still, after Bishop H7, you can take the Rook, Pawn takes, take the Bishop, but Queen F5 and should be completely winning for White. So... Uh, Rook g7, only move, and, well, the next move is uh, clear, queen h4, check. King g8, now, um, even though, because sometimes happens a lot, I don't know if um, that uh, has happened to some of you, when we are attacking, we usually focus on all sides, and we try to find Oh, like all threats and try to we are we forget to think that we have an opponent in front of us who has a lot of could have a lot of threats now one big threat is queen e2 yeah. so we have to keep the attack and prevent this move queen e2 okay how can we do that now bishop h7 is interesting but after king f8 Mm, how can you continue that? Rook G2? Well, no, the rook is pinned. Oh, true, because otherwise it would be queen. The queen, yeah. Yeah, we can't play rook g2. Also, bishop h7, king f8. Oh, but if we check here, king f8. And also, we have to be very careful of uh, checking too much when we are attacking. Because let's say we start checking our opponent, king here. Then we check again. King goes e8. And the king is almost in a good position then after that. So which means that here uh, is weak. Here is a strong. So we should keep the king in the uh, like weaker position. That's why, yeah, the best move, okay, some of you found the move, is queen h5. We are covering this square. Now, we are also covering the king of this escaping square. Now, the um, move that you said before, bishop h7, rook takes f5, yeah. now might work, because the king cannot go to e8. Yeah. So in the game, bishop c8 uh, was what happened, because, okay, you have to protect the f5 pawn. Now, what? Uh, what happened if I take this pawn? And actually, no, black can't take the pawn. I remember some of you said that, okay, that um, black um, hasn't had the chance to take the c4 pawn. And yes, so still there is not a chance to take the pawn. Uh, but what happens? How can white win? So this is a, a, a nice puzzle this could be those puzzles that you do in lee chess or chess.com 
So why play and win? Let's think for two minutes. And instead of give, giving me one move, try to give me la, like the whole variation of moves. Okay, so McCarthy says bishop f7, king f8. Well, but if you play bishop f7, I don't have to, to play king f8. I could take on f7. Okay, dark tiger, you forgot you have a bishop on h7 when you checkmate on h8. So you cannot play queen h8 because there is a bishop in, in the middle. Yeah, you forgot about that. And Misha, you said check, but instead of king h8, I could go uh, king f8 too. Oh, you're sure there's something with that move? Maybe. Uh, bishop, you are, so Sol is the same, bishop h7, and then rook takes and queen g8. Yeah, but it's black to move too. If bishop h7, king f8, you take on g7, and then I take with queen. And you can't checkmate on e8. So Alex, you said rook f5 right away, right now? Well, rook f5, I mean, uh, seems interesting. But after rook f5, actually, white is not threatening anything. Like if bishop h7, then I can take because it's not pinned. So, no, it might be another move so okay um, I think dark knight found an interesting solution so you said bishop h7 king f8 rook takes f5 rook f7 queen h6 checkmate okay the first variation you forgot about the bishop on h7 now you forgot about the king the king can go e8 and it's not checkmate Queen h6, king e8, uh, bishop e6, or you said bishop g6 at the end instead of bishop e6 because uh, dark knight, the bishop is on h7. Yeah, but if you do that, you forgot about the queen. The queen comes to e2 because it's not check. So... Okay. Um, no one has... Uh, okay, yeah, Misha found the, the idea and the, the winning move. So uh, Misha here found the, the winning move, which is bishop h7 check. The king goes to f8. Then you take rook f7, and uh, dark knight was thinking about queen h6, but the king is going to the other way. And bishop g6 is not on time because queen e2, and the queen is uh, at least black has uh, perpetual. And no, probably it will be checkmate because king g3, I will play check and you can't go h4, g4, I mean king g4, queen check, the king should go h5, bishop check, king here, queen check on f2, king g5, and then queen g3, checkmate. So we have to be careful. Now the move is the, the, the one that Misha showed here, which is bishop g6, this amazing move. And 
you are threatening Queen H8 and Rook F7. So two threats, Rook F7 and Queen H8, and White um, wins. So I, I mean, I didn't show you this King H8, uh, but it's too easy. So you just take King G8 and Queen H7 check. The king has to go to f8 because the queen protects g7 and the king too. But after queen h8, you take one of the, those protections. The king goes f7, you take here, win the queen. Um, the game continues bishop c8, and now uh, instead of like continuing the attack, white, white, um, so Ray made this move. Pawn takes this simple move. It's taking some pawns, but also black is almost in suits one. Like, what can black do here? All pieces are like trapped. The king cannot go to the queen side. The rook has to be there protecting here. And the queen has to be there protecting the rook and protecting f7. If we bring the queen to e3, for example, then bishop f7, check, king f8, queen h8. And then we are taking the rook. So it's almost suits one. Well, Westlake played this move. And then, um, probably white is winning for uh, with a couple ways, but queen h6 looks good enough. If queen e2, or, or maybe this is the best move, if queen e2 just rook g2, and the rook covers um, the king, also the queen on h6 is protecting f4, the pawn, so black can only move the pawns. And here, um, maybe there are more than one continuation to, to win here, but uh, the game finished with a nice sixth one. Uh, bishop check, king of fate, and white to move. Queen f6, how oh, queen f6? The, the, there is a queen on, on e7. Uh, bishop f5, okay, we cannot forget about this threat, queen e2, because now we can't defend with the rook on g2. Uh, there is a rook on, on g7, so black will take. And after queen e2, it's perpetual. So, yes. Uh, T W was the first one who found it. Then Misha also found the move, uh, and the move is who else found the move? No, I think only Misha and T W. Rook G two, just this simple move. Look that instead of taking this pawn, I winning a pawn. Instead of that, White just uh, plays this move. Keeping the attack, because when we are attacking, we don't want to trade off um, pieces in general. But now white has a big, big threat. And what's that big threat? What, what, what's uh, white threatening now? That rook. The rook is pinned, yes. And we can take advantage of that pin. Uh, so one says bishop g6. Well, if you play bishop g6, I can go king e8. So, and yeah, black is in suit one. But you want to make this move work, queen h8. If you go and play queen h8, King f7 and rook takes g7. Now, how can you make it work? Mm, yeah, that, that's the move. Uh, short cut and also picky found the move. Yeah, just bishop takes f5. Bishop takes pawn and uh, the queen goes to h8, and there is not a way to stop that threat. So, 
uh, Wesley resigned in this position, even though they are both equal, like material equal, but after, like bishop f5 cannot be stopped. So, yeah. And, yeah, this was, um, I, I, I believe, was an amazing game played by Ray. Um, he played a very, in a very aggressive style. And after that king h2 and d4, king h2, every move was an attacking move. So um, I hope everyone enjoyed the game. And if you have any question, let me know if you, if you have any question uh, about the game or something in general. I will be happy to answer it. Thank you so much. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Have a great day. Okay, no questions. So, okay, so I will see you all uh, tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Adrian, and thank you, Piki. So, I will see you all tomorrow. And Theodore, Frank.